Welcome back to Educator.com's English Grammar Course. This lesson is on prepositions. Let's get started. All right, let's do a quick overview. In this lesson, we're going to cover what a preposition is, how prepositional phrases work, which is how you use prepositions, and how to use prepositions correctly. Okay, what is a preposition? Prepositions are a part of speech, uh, and they express the relationship often in time or space between two words in a sentence. That word relationship is important. We're going to come back to it. Prepositions are always used in a special kind of construction called a prepositional phrase. And prepositional phrases, as a category, do the same work as adjectives and adverbs. Now, you'll remember from our previous lessons that adjectives modify nouns or pronouns, they describe them, and adverbs modify verbs, adjectives, and other adverbs. Prepositional phrases, depending on the context, can do all of that. All right, here we have a few examples of prepositions. We have about, above, across, after, against, along, around, at, and on and on, during, inside, into, near, off, on, outside, oh, we had inside back in here, of, over, past, through, toward, all of these are prepositions. And there are many, many more in the English language. You can find lots of lists of prepositions. If you're trying to identify them, memorization is absolutely essential here. You're just going to have to memorize these words. However, if you're trying to recognize a prepositional phrase in its native habitat, the sentence, there's a trick. Think of a preposition as anything you can do to a log. OK, you're walking through the forest, and you find a log. Well, you have some options. If you're in a hurry, you can step over the log. If, you're, if you feel like getting a little grubby, you can crawl under the log. If it's a hollow log, you can go through the log. You can walk along the log like the man in the picture is doing. If you're a friendly sort of person, you can make friends with the log. If you and the log have a fight, you can go home without the log. You can tell all of your friends about the log. You can run around the log. You can look beyond the log. You might have noticed a common construction in these sentences. They all use prepositions to refer to the object log. So when you're looking for prepositions, just think of anything you can do to a log. All right, prepositional phrases, what are they? I've used that a bunch of times in this lecture so far. Prepositional phrases always begin with a preposition, and they end with a noun or pronoun that's known as the object of the preposition. The object of the preposition is whatever is standing in for the log. Prepositional phrases modify the first word, noun, or verb in the relationship. And prepositional phrases function as adverbs or adjectives. All right, see if you can find the prepositional phrases in these sentences. Please put the apple on the table. And the cat with white fur is mine. Take a good look. Pause the video if you need to. And there they are. Please put the apple on the table. On is the preposition. Its object is table. On the log. On the table. And the prepositional phrase on the table as a whole modifies the verb put. It answers the question where. Where do you put the apple? You put it on the table. So this prepositional phrase is doing the job of an adverb. Okay, here we have the cat with white fur is mine. The preposition with, the object fur, and the prepositional phrase with white fur. The cat with the log. But in this case, the prepositional phrase with white fur modifies the noun cat. What kind of cat? A cat with white fur. So in this case, the prepositional phrase is doing the job of an adjective. See how it works? All right, see if you can find the prepositions in this passage. On the first day of June, Mike took his dog to the park in the afternoon. The dog ran over the grass and chased a squirrel up a tree. Mike ran after his dog and searched for it. He finally found the dog just before sunset. Take a good look. There's plenty of prepositions in here. 
And there we have it. On the first day of June, Mike took his dog to the park. To the park in the afternoon. And the prepositional phrase on the first day and of June both tell you when Mike performed his action. So they both modify the verb took. They're acting as adverbs. He took his dog to the park. Well, that tells you where he took his dog. So again, it's acting as an adverb. And he took the dog to the park when? In the afternoon. Once again, acting as an adverb, all of that modifying took. Those are some very busy logs. The dog ran over the grass and chased a squirrel up a tree. Both of those tell you where something happened. Where did the dog run? Over the grass. It's modifying ran, so it's acting as an adverb. And where did the dog chase the squirrel? Up a tree. Modifying chased, and again, acting as an adverb. Mike ran after his dog. Preposition after, object dog. Whole prepositional phrase modifies ran again. And searched for it. Modifying searched. He finally found the dog just before sunset. Whole prepositional phrase modifying found. OK, here's how to use prepositions correctly. First and foremost, always use prepositions in prepositional phrases. If you have a preposition, it belongs in a prepositional phrase and nowhere else. Second, use prepositional phrases as you would use adjectives or adverbs. As we saw in the previous example, all of those prepositional phrases happen to be modifying verbs. They all acted as adverbs. We could have put adverbs in there, but the prepositional phrases happen to be more specific. So, once you've got a prepositional phrase as a block, you can throw it anywhere in the sentence that it would make sense as an adjective or adverb. And finally, never end a sentence with a preposition. You'll hear a lot of people do this in conversational English, but in your writing, it is considered very poor form. So don't do it. All right, see if you can find the prepositions in these sentences. Could you go to the store for me? I think I left my jacket on the bus. Human beings cannot live very long without drinking water. The letter was hidden behind the painting, tucked inside the frame. The little girl had a smile on her face and a song in her heart. And between the houses was a small garden. Take a good look. Pause if you need to. And here they are. Can you go to the store for me? Two prepositional phrases, both modifying the verb go. Can you go where to the store? Can you go why for me? I think I left my jacket on the bus. Where did you leave your jacket? On the bus, modifying the verb left. Human beings cannot live very long without drinking water. How can they not live very long? Without drinking water. So it modifies the verb live. The letter was hidden behind the painting, modifying hidden, tucked inside the frame, modifying tucked. The little girl had a smile on her face, acting as an adjective, modifying smile, and a song in her heart. Once again, acting as an adjective, modifying song. And finally, between the houses was a small garden. In this case, it's a subject complement, modifying garden. Where was the garden? Between the houses. All right, see if you can find the prepositions and prepositional phrases in this famous quotation. We shall not flag nor fail. We shall go on to the end. We shall fight in France and on the seas and oceans. We shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air. We shall defend our island whatever the cost may be. 
We shall fight on beaches, landing grounds, in fields, in streets, and on the hills. We shall never surrender. Winston Churchill from a speech he gave in 1940. Take a good look. See if you can find the prepositions and their phrases. And there they are. Winston Churchill was a man who loved his prepositions. We shall not flag nor fail. We shall go on where? To the end. We shall fight where? In France. And also on the seas and oceans. Once again, you've got nouns acting as the objects of the preposition on. We shall fight how? With growing confidence and growing strength in the air. We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on beaches and also on landing grounds, in fields, in streets, and on hills. All of those answering the question, where? So all of them acting as adverbs. We shall never surrender. And there's your, and there's your examples of prepositions. That's all for this lesson. Thank you for watching. Educator.com.